Hello. Do you know what time it is? It's your time. Oh, hey guys. How are you doing? We have a very special episode for you. I was very fortunate to sit down with Randy Mosher and ask him a few questions. Now, Randy is an expert in the field of beer. He's also written books such as Brewer's Companion, Radical Brewing, Tasting Beer, Beer for All Seasons, and his most recent book, Mastering Homebrew. This format is slightly longer than our usual five minutes, so do sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer, and enjoy. Cheers. Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Hashtag Beer Time with me, T-Bone Troy. We've got a very special guest with us. His name is Randy Mosher and if you don't know him, he's quite a big deal in the beer scene. Randy, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Troy. Great cool. to be here. Um, Randy, I'd like to start off by asking when people ask you what you do, how do you usually respond to that? Well, I usually just say I have the weirdest resume in craft brewing. Because because I'm a brewery partner in two breweries in Chicago, I teach at the brewing school, uh, I write books, um, I do graphic design for craft breweries and some other types of uh, consulting work. So I have a uh, just many different creative irons in the fire. But I, I guess I would sum it all up as saying I do creative work for beer. Is there anyone who actually comes up to you and has no clue who you are, um, and you kind of have to break it to them that you have a few books out. Uh, Maybe they're a bit naive. Well, as my wife constantly reminds me, don't forget, you're only beer famous. <laughs> okay. But people like, I mean, uh, once you get into craft brewing, you start looking around at books and things, and mine, sure. mine pop up fairly, fairly frequently. But um, I don't, you know, I don't try and be a big deal about it. It's, sure. it's, uh, to be humble. It's a, privilege yeah, yeah. To, it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to participate in, in all this uh, activity. It, it's certainly, that's something that I've also learned, is just to kind of, be humble and just to appreciate everything and anything um, because it's a long journey. Right. Yeah. Could you tell us about your first light bulb moment, uh, something that just popped up in your head and, and first came to you when you decided this is going to be it, this is going to be craft beer for me? Um, to drink or to do as a life pursuit? To, to As a life pursuit, that this was going to be your game. Um, and if you could place for us where you were, how old you were. It, it was no one great light bulb. It was a lot of tiny candles that eventually sure. turned into a big fire. And uh, uh, I, I went to college in Cincinnati at a time when there were four local breweries there still. And, and there, there's one still left. Uh, but, you know, so I kind of came of age in a environment where having local breweries wasn't anything really extraordinary so I guess I had that in the back of my mind and then started drinking imports and things and looking around just kind of interested in flavor got interested in sure. cooking when I was in college because we were tired of eating terrible grocery store pot sure. pies and things and so <laughs> so that it just brewing was just a natural outgrowth of that and then a friend and I had talked about it for years and we finally ordered a kit and then about that time we ran across Michael Jackson's World Guide to Beer sure. and it was like sticking the finger in the socket, you know, so if you're going to have a moment, that would be the moment, right? Okay, so it's more of a finger socket moment, I like that. Because it was, it was just like all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, look at what the possibilities are. Sure. You know, and then we started brewing, there, weren't not, there were not Belgian beers available in the United States at that time in any yeah. meaningful way, so it was like, hmm, Saison, that looks pretty good, let's like see if we can figure out how to make that and a wit beer and a... Um, uh, Abbey style beers and, and all of that and so we're Brilliant. just basically cobbling together recipes from from what we could find in his book Brilliant. and uh, so that one thing that was it you know it's amazing how many people who I meet who are new to the whole craft beer thing have that oh my god moments it's almost discovering a new chapter or a new passage or way of life that they just never knew existed yeah um, it's, it's I must say, it's quite a special feeling. Yeah, well, people today, I mean, Jackson was so fundamental in so many different ways sure. as a cheerleader for beer and, and an encourager of the a Brewers Association. And he suggested to Charlie Papazian, hey, you should start a great American beer festival and things like that. And so mm. he was always very generous with his time with everybody. And, yeah. and so, but people have forgotten about him a little bit. You know, he's been dead, sure. I don't know, seven, eight years, and it's already yes. passed into ancient history. And people have come of age in a, in a world where there's craft beer and can cannot even picture a world without that and uh, 
So he, it's important, you know, that because he painted that picture, he made you want to be sure. a part of it and 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 uh, um, experience it. No, I, t I totally agree. agree. Um, and that kind of leads into the next question. Um, I mean, if you could pick two people, one from when you first started uh, the craft beer, your whole craft beer scene, and someone who's a little bit now closer in the last few years, if you could pick two people who you really admire or look up to who, or who think are really deserve a mention. Uh, well, uh, the first one w would have to be a guy named Charles Finkel, who founded a company in the United States called Merchant Devan. Okay. And he wasn't a, a, a brewer originally, he was a wine guy, and he read Michael Jackson's book and he used it as a shopping catalog. So he called okay. the monks at Orval and said, hi, I'm Charlie Finkel from Seattle, uh, I'd be interested in representing your beers in the United States. So, sure. so he started bringing in a huge range of Lindemans and, okay. and uh, Eyinger and all these very famous beers, but they weren't famous then. So he was the first guy who really figured out how to merchandise and sell and get people excited about it. And he gave me my start because he published my first book. He uh, uh, would bring me to Seattle every year, and mm. Michael Jackson's in the bedroom upstairs, and I'm in the basement bedroom. And it, you, know, you and you got the basement. It was yeah. well, you know, <clears throat> Michael Jackson, right? Sure, <laughs> I'm not Michael Jackson. Yeah. So, so, uh, and that was a real thrill. And really, he, he's we're still good friends, and he, we have a lot because he likes to do design work. We have this common, common theme in our, in our careers, and uh, it's just been a great experience. I'd say more recently, I think uh, you know Sam Callajone is a great inspiration. Great, has been yeah. able to make really creative. Uh, creative beers and, and build that into a big brand. More recently, there's a little brewery in uh, downstate Illinois that uh, called Scratch Brewing. Scratch. And they're basically foraging for beer. So they have uh, um, some property in, in a wooded oh, wow. area and they're going off and finding roots and berries and oak bark and oak acorns and they're making fabulous beer with, with these crazy wild ingredients. And I think it's a, I know there's a guy in the Carolinas doing that and and so that's amazing. There's, uh, it's it's really fascinating to see how far people are pushing it, wow. and, and with a, a good degree of skill. So I think those guys are pretty exciting. Uh, wow. Okay. There. That that is pretty exciting. So next question is, uh, if you could kind of explain to us why you decided to take the route that you took, and maybe not open a brewery all those years ago, um, mm -hmm. and why you decided to go more of a branding, graphic design. Uh, spokesperson kind of consultants it just sort of fell naturally like I said it was a lot of little steps that kind of got me where I am and uh, really was working as a purely as a graphic designer and uh, interested in beer all I've ever really wanted to do is creative things I have no interest in finance and no interest in in, in <laughs> dealing with government regulations yep. I have no like and I would be terrible at it I'm a horrible bureaucrat and so um, I almost started a brewery with Ray Daniels, okay. who runs a oh, wow. Cicerone program, yeah. and many other things. And he and I spent two years with some partners, and we came within one signature of actually uh, leasing a place and starting a brewery. Sure. And then I think what we could both, have been? Uh, I think yeah. Well, I think we just realized both of us at the time we just weren't prepared to go go all in on it because we both had other things that we enjoyed doing and. If it doesn't excite you 100, percent it's just not much chance was of doing it. it. Yeah, and it's sort of. We finally like okay, I guess it's not going to happen. So, but it, but it, for me, the the perfect partner never came along, yeah. who and I didn't have the financial resources to go off and do it on my own, and so um, I, I just had to wait until somebody came along who for whom my skills were a perfect fit, and yeah. finagle my way into the businesses I've done in the last uh, five years or so with the partnerships that I have going in Chicago. And, so. and I suppose I mean. You happy with the, the direction you took? There are no regrets or anything like that. So you, yeah. I mean, well, there's always what could have been, sure. you know. But uh, but I've got two really exciting breweries who are doing some fantastic things. One of them was just on a list. We got an email today where I'm on a list of ten most innovative breweries in the United States. So that's oh, a, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that, that's quite a big deal. Uh, so we well, along with some very um, good, very good companies. So that's exciting. So. Um, you know, I'm, we'll see where all that goes, but, yeah. I, but I'm perfectly happy doing what I do and, and not trying to run the whole thing and hire people and deal with, I mean, it's just, I'm not that good a businessman, to be honest. Sure. So, uh, I suppose that's quite a, a quite an issue with a few uh, brewers and maybe a mistake they make. It's actually great that it leads into the next question because I think brewers try and do everything. They try and be brewer, marketer, businessman. 
whereas something that I've learned is that you should probably just focus on one aerial aspect. You can either, I mean, unless you agree or disagree, um, that maybe that, that could be going into the next question. And what's the one mistake that you think brewers or beer brands make when starting out, uh, specifically in an emerging market? Sure. Um, and if you can, this is a twofold question, if yeah. you could point out anything unique that you've seen in South Africa. So that's three questions now. And the, and the first question really is, um, you have to do all those things. Yeah. They all have to get done, okay. right? And so what ideally in a partnership, you have uh, one person who's really good with money and business and structure. Yeah. You have one person who's really creative and, uh, and understands beer and flavor and how to talk about it and do it. And then you have another person who's um, uh, really good at selling things. And, and I do see people, friends who homebrew and everybody wants to be the Everybody wants to be one. It's very romantic. And you need these yeah. like really different uh, personalities and experience bases yeah. to, to make a, a go of it. I think in terms of um, mistakes, there are so many. I mean, you got to get the product right. Yeah. It's hard to make good beer. Sure. And, and having your kit together and properly doing it and, and working with yeast and getting in ingredients. I mean, you know, yeah. you do it. it. It's incredibly complicated product. And then the other thing I think is... Uh, People look at big breweries and they look at small craft breweries and they think, well, I want to start, but I don't want to be a niche product. Yeah. I want to be big. more like, I want to be in between. And so what they end up is sort of being half-assed version of, with, of a macro beer with a little more flavor, but without the quality control. Sure. And they're twice the price and people are like, why am I paying all this money for this kind of thing? And that's yeah. where, sort of where a lot of the market is here. I think just based on my limited observation, maybe a little bit more so in, in Johannesburg than it is here in Cape Town, but, sure. but I'm, I'm, I'm having this very strange picture. I don't really, you we, know, because we'll, we'll I'm, I'm, I'm brand new here. Yeah. I'm brand new here, right? So I don't want to make too many generalizations, but I do see there's a lot of breweries just making lager. And, sure. and I know that has a specific meaning here, but it's just too vague. And it's, yeah. you want people to come on a journey with you, and it's not enough. And you can't compete with SAB on their own terms because they'll crush you like a flea. They've right? been around and for 120 they, years. They, they do, it, they they do what they do really well. Sure. And so uh, you have to, we have to be different. We have to not try and do what they do. And so you have to, we were talking about American wheat beer in the United States. That was the stepping stone. Yes. Because, it, because people would think in their minds that they're drinking something really different because it looked different. And it had a little bit of hops. It had some flavor characteristics that were different. But, but the, in reality, it was a fairly simple beer. It was an easy step, but in their minds, it was sure. bigger than it really was. Mm. And that's a, that's a secret, you know, that's a, 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 a key thing with a lot of those people where you're just trying to get them. The big trick is to just don't do your regular thing, do something different. Sure. And so you have to make it kind of easy for it, but you have to do it in a way that where they feel like, ooh, we're really stepping out here, we're really yeah. doing something different. So. I, I think that's what's happened in the South African scene is that we used to just be dominated by lagers from the big guys. Sure, of course. And unfortunately, what's happened now is all the craft brewers are jumping on board with lagers. So you've essentially still got lager on tap, yeah. um, which is a pity, which I mean, I've always been pushing for, given the, 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 the outlets or the restaurants, uh, a bit of a selection. Sure. Um, but, but, but you can't go to IPAs. That's, that's yeah. as, as delicious as those can be. <laughs> They're expensive beers to make, and yeah. they're a real challenge for a lot of people. And sure. they taste one and think, "Ugh, this craft beer is not for me." So that's where Belgian beers come along with beers and saisons and sort of farmhousey kinds of like a South African farmhouse beer. I haven't heard of that yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> so picture what I trademark. Mean, well, actually, you know, I mean, you, you, you know, very everybody's very much hung up on this lager heritage that the English sort of brought with them. But what were the Dutch brewing? Yeah, you know, was there a? I mean, those guys came, they brewed some beer. What was it like? And so what else is there lost in the archives that, that maybe could be brought back and step back in history and use that as a touchstone to make something to move and forward with? As we said before, there's your story and there's something that you people will will drink up. Yeah. Excuse the pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. Well, we've got a few rapid fire questions. Sure. Um, the, the questions are quick, but I mean, you can answer them quickly or give short answers or long answers. Sure, yeah. First question, uh, what's the most well, I suppose, what's the best beer you've made? Kind of hard to answer. I'm sort of famous for a chanterelle ale. Okay. So a mushroom that has a real fruity, perfumey kind of quality. Okay. And that's 
uh, pretty famous uh, in homebrew circles, at least. You know? Sure. Okay, and we well. brewed that at one of my breweries. Um, I, I, I love a good wit beer. You know, when I got to the point, I could make a wit beer that okay. made me happy. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was a pretty good moment. Okay, great. Um, and that, I mean, speaking of Chanterelle, the next question would be like any unique ingredients that you've seen over the years that just really stood out and you just actually wouldn't expect to find in the beer. Sure. Well, when I was in Australia a few years ago and came across a spice called Tasmanian pepperberry, and it looks okay. like a cross between a black peppercorn and a juniper berry, and it has oh, wow. a, when you put it in your mouth, you, it, first you get like, oh, it's fruity, like a blueberry, and then you think, no, it's like juniper, and then after 30 seconds you think, wow, this thing's really freaking hot, <laughs> and it's like a mustardy heat, and then like another 30 seconds and that goes away, and then in your mouth it's about five minutes of something, wow. everything okay. tastes a little sweet. And so uh, we we use that in a beer. Need to get our hands on that. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's a level. They cook a wild game and lamb and things with it. Uh, beautiful spice, and I, I like to cook with that now. But one I'm cons currently obsessed with is a thing called balsam of Peru. Okay. That's a tree resin that uh, comes from a tree that's sort of widespread in uh, South and Central America, uh, and that has this um, rich fruity, vanilla, it's sort of used a lot of pipe tobacco. So okay. you know the smell of pipe tobacco. Sure, people yes. always reminds people of pipe tobacco. It's a okay. real deep bass note, very heavy, very sort of sweet floral, um, pretty, oh, wow. pretty intense, pretty amazing. And so it, we haven't really found the right beer for it, but but that'll find a way into a beer at some sure. point. I did not expect those two answers. That's quite a, uh, it's quite an elaborate kind of a uh, ingredients. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I was here recently introduced to Buhu, which is a really fantastic thing yes. that has a really, a really fabulous story with the sun, and and yes. and it, it really has to do with why they're here. Sure, it's one of those fundamentals. So you have to get online. You have to find that story yes. of the buffalo, and and I don't uh, think the god of rain. I and, think and, we were yet to find a, an amazing buku beer, unless there's someone out there who can disagree. But. Yeah, I think we're still at the It's a difficult intro. ingredient because yeah. it has this, on the one hand, it has sort of kiwi, gooseberry, blackberry sort of fruit mm -hmm. components. And then on the other hand, it has this minty herbaceous quality. So there, those two things are quite different characteristics and you have sure. to find a beer that, that it works in. Yeah. That, that's the thing about those specialty ingredients. You can't just take a lager and dump some in no. because you don't get any, you know, you have to really, first you have, you have a story. Why is there this beer? And then, uh, then you have to think about what are those flavor characteristics and what's going to go How's well. it going to com complement and yeah, contrast? It's, it's a gastronomic question, exactly. basically, right? You can't just put peppermint in, in your steak. Sure. It doesn't really work. Right? So <laughs> yeah. You have to yeah. think, give it that kind yeah. of like a, a common sense test. For sure. For sure. What's the most underrated beer? what right now maybe in the states or uh or, or can be a brewery there's a brewery in cambridge massachusetts and part of boston sure called cambridge brewing company boston yeah and uh there's the, the brewer owner there's name well he's really the owner that he's got another brewer now but uh will myers and he he they're not widely distributed but he's been at making creative beers for a very long time and i mm. think that he's one of those brewers that whenever i'm Wherever, wherever I am, wherever I can find those beers, I always go to them. And I think he's like a very much an unsung hero. There's another guy named Mark Jilg out in uh, Pasadena with a company called Craftsman in Craftsman. Southern California. Okay. That's also been fighting that fight for a very long time. And he's not a particularly good self-promoter, and, and, uh, but, but he makes some really fantastic yeah. beers too. So I like, I like those guys that are a little bit underrated who just have a mission and they stick to it. And, uh, so you basically fly across the States? and taste beer. Well, now around the world. So people, I get these emails, you know, hey Randy, you want to come taste beer? I'm, cool. I'm turning down you know, requests in Ecuador and Paraguay. And, I'm going to apply you know, for your job, like so many. if you don't mind. It sounds good. No, it is, it's great, it's a great life. It is pretty good. <laughs> I, I have to, I mean, I could travel all the time if I wanted to, but I can't afford it. Even people are paying my way, sure. but I've, I have to do some work at some point, you know. Well, if you can't make any appointments, just, I'm a phone call away. Okay. Good okay. deal. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, we've got two more questions just to wrap yeah, sure. up. Um, any book that you usually give people on beer brewing besides your own? Um, anything that you have read 
uh, that you think, hmm, this is actually pretty decent. It's a good read. Uh, well, I'll give you quite a list. Um, anything by Martin Cornell or okay. Ron Pattinson. Look, they're English guys who have done a huge amount of research into the history of, of especially English beers. So highly recommended. Anything by Stan Hieronymus. Um, he's, I, I think, our best writer in, in the U.S. He's just got a beer coming out on local beer, but he's written a book on wheat beer. He's book, written a book on uh, uh, called Brew Like a Monk. A really great journalist and an incredibly good writer, and, oh, wow. and so okay. highly recommended. The other one, just for fun, if you can get your hands on it, is called the Comic Book History of Beer. Oh wow! And there was four guys who put this together last year. And an actual it, comic book? Or? It's a big, thick book, but it is a comic book. It's a purely an illustrated, Done. like graphic. Done. Book. Sold. And the his, they got the history right, and it's hilariously done. It's just okay. beautiful, and and really fantastic. So if you're okay, if you're trying to bring somebody into the world of beer, it's really fun and easy way to do it. But but they did the research and they got the history right, which Brilliant. people don't always do. So it's good. Yeah, it's good that people get it right. It's very yeah. important. It is. Yeah. Last question. Mm -hmm. What's next for craft beer? Where do you see uh, things going? I think, uh, well, in the, in the U.S., we've got 4,600 breweries there, which is an astounding number. And uh, I think probably that's doubled in the last about four years, maybe. Amazing. Uh, I think, uh, and, and we're lower, I think around 12% by uh, barrelage and close to 20% by dollar volume. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of seeing in that market, there are some markets that are up about, well, there are some markets that can't double again. They've almost plateaued in terms of. They're not going to. Their growth is slowing a little sure. bit. And uh, but I think uh, so. It's it's getting more competitive. Uh, and what that means is you better have your act together. You better sure. be making great beer. You better have a great idea. You better do the packaging, branding, all that stuff right, and the the social media right, and build a great community, mm. and do all that kind of thing. Because the days of people just sort of walking in and succeeding are are over. But I still see it's exciting to, to me always to see a lot of people getting into the business who don't know what they're doing. Sure. Especially people who are starting on a nano scale um, and they just want to make some beer. That's and right. I think that's great because yeah. some will succeed, some will fail, but they won't go down in spectacular flames. You know, mm -hmm. it'll be smaller failures and sure. some people figure it out and, and uh, grow into amazing things. But it, it does take time. But um, I think that's where South African market is right now, where we're kind of reaching a point where you can't just go for it wild wild west style you know you, you, as i've been saying to a lot of my friends in the beer industry you better have your product rights you better have your customer service rights because at the end of the day people are going to be looking for a story they're going to be looking at a brand you're going to have all these amazing beers in the markets it's going to be relatively the same price so you're going to have to have something that sticks out and that relates to people. Yeah, and the average drinker can't articulate what's wrong with a beer, but they know if it's a, if it's astringent, it lingers on the palate, or if it's got this some strange smell or buttery kind of quality or whatever it happens to be, it's just not as appetizing to them. So, yeah, yeah. quality first. Quality first. But ideas, you have to have ideas. Nice ideas, good ideas. Cool. Well. Randy, I know your time is really valuable, really valuable. So I appreciate, I'm very grateful for giving us your time. Um, but thank you very much for being on Hashtag Beer Time. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, incredibly stoked, incredibly happy, and awesome. it was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, very, very nice to meet you too. So. Cool. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cool. Do I need to push record? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Greg. <laughs> <laughs>